G'day, Chris here. Welcome back to ClickSpring. In this video, I go through the steps for making the clock pillars. The job of the pillars is to hold the frames a fixed distance apart and also to give them some rigidity. So they're a structural thing, but they're meant to look good too. This is the profile I'm aiming for, and aside from the dimensions, I guess the main thing I want to see is that the curves and tapers all look the same on each of the three pillars. So let's get started. There's a few ways to make this part. For me it works best to do the end spigots first and then finish off the rest of the part between centres. That way all of the surfaces are concentric and I can pull the part out to check on it as many times as I want without introducing any errors. So I turn the first spigot to final size. And it's important that the pillars seat firmly into the plates so the spigots are given a good undercut. Then I drilled and tapped it for the screws and I made that centre drill hole quite large to give a good bearing surface for the 60 degree centre later on. Then I marked out the dimensions for the other end and then parted off, rechucked the other way around and repeated the same process for the other spigot. Again, I gave it a good undercut and a nice generous centre hole for the centre to seat in later. Now I don't have a drive plate for this lathe, so I'm going to turn a centre in place from this hex bar and then attach a driver to it instead. I used a carrier to grip the part by the spigot and I made this particular carrier especially for the job. Click on the link if you want to see the video about that. So now with the part between centres, I can get started on the ornamental turning. First the centre section was thinned down. Then I marked out the end points for the tapers and the location of the central groove. And I cut the tapers using an offset on the compound of about 4 degrees. I ground a semicircular form tool to do the plunge cut for the central crew. And I made a form tool for the end curves too. I didn't really like my chances of getting the matching curves by hand, so I figured a form tool would make the job easier. And honestly, I don't think I could have even gotten close without it. I 
I followed this with a bit of filing and polishing to remove the tool marks. And then I put a very light taper on each of the spigots. This is to stop them getting jammed in the plates. Each spigot was given a test fit in the frames too to make sure all was well. And then a thin coat of clear lacquer. I'll redo the polishing and lacquering at the end of the build, but this coat should protect the pillars a little bit from all the handling they get in the meantime. Now all three pillars must have the same shoulder length, so I identified the shortest of the three, pushed it hard up against the chuck jaws, put in tailstock support, and then locked off the carriage. All of this is quite important because now I can take a fine cut across the shoulder face and know that the tool is effectively zeroed at what will be the shoulder length for all three pillars. Each of the remaining pillars is then chucked and faced in the same way, giving three completed pillars with exactly the same shoulder length. In the next video, I'll make the washers and screws and also assemble the frames. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.